name is Samantha Omar. Um, I worked on this research project with James Pugh, Kayla Chavez, Scholar Hayes, and Mary Claire Ridgway. Um, and we looked at whether there was legacy soil pollution from the Cumming Street incinerator site. So incinerators are mechanical units that convert um, waste material to ash and gases through combustion. Um, the first incinerator site was built on Governor's Island in New York in 1885. And then waste incineration became popular in the U.S. in the first half of the 20th century, and it was seen as a way to manage waste. Um, and by the mid-20th century, hundreds of incinerators were in operation in the country. So um, the pollutants from these incinerators can either be released um, through ash or through gaseous emissions. Um, lead having a much higher boiling point than mercury is um, deposited with the ash, while mercury has a much lower boiling point and is more likely to be released through the gaseous waste as well as carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxides. Um, there are serious health impacts that can arise from these pollutants. Mercury exposure can lead to damage to the nervous, digestive, and immune systems, and it can lead to neurological and behavioral disorders. And lead exposure is associated with many cardiovascular effects, and it is especially dangerous to pregnant women and children. So going off of these negative health impacts um, is a recent study from Durham, North Carolina, and it looked at three city state parks that used to be old incinerator sites. Um, and in the study, they collected soil samples that all ranged from 0 to 2.5 centimeters in depth and um, at GPS points, and they found that two parks um, out of the three had um, much higher soil lead concentrations, um, greater than the EPA threshold for safe soil play in the areas. So here is a map of the Cumming Street incinerator site, which was the focus of our study. As you can see, marked by the red box in the corner is our incinerator, and by the arrow is marked the Cumming Street School, which is located on Wofford's property today. The boxes surrounding the incinerator and located on the map represent the homes of individuals in neighboring areas, showing the lack of separation between the incinerator and the everyday lives of individuals. The Cumming Street School was opened in 1926 which was the same year that the incinerator was opened. The school was home to the first public high school of African Americans in Spartanburg. The back of the college neighborhood was suspected to be the first African American owned land in Spartanburg. The proximity of the neighborhood and the school to the incinerator leave us to believe that environmental injustice could have played a factor in the location of the incinerator. Despite complaints of the black haze that surrounded the homes from the incinerator, the incinerator remained in Spartanburg for several years. The purpose of our research was to investigate what environmental hazards the residents of the neighboring area and the children that attended the school were exposed to from the incinerator at the time of its existence. We also wanted to explore what environmental hazards still exist in the soil from the incinerator today. Okay, so what you can see here on your screen is an image of the Cumming Street School that is currently on Walford. And overlaid on this image, we've included a map that shows where homes in the back of the college neighborhood were located at the time of incinerator use. Unfortunately, when we were collecting soil samples for our research, we were not able to collect samples directly from the incinerator site. The incinerator is placed currently on Spartanburg Regional Hospital System property and not on Wofford College property. So we were only able to sample here within Wofford's campus. In addition, we wanted to make sure that we were sampling locations that were more likely to be undisturbed since the time of the incinerator use. So we tried to avoid places where houses would have once stood. Overall, we collected five total samples at a depth of about five to seven inches using soil probes. A majority of these indicated by the red dots here on the screen were located around the Cumming Street School. Once we collected each of our samples, we brought them back to the lab and mechanically grinded them down to break down any large soil clusters, and then further sieved them through a 250 micron sieve to get rid of any rocks or other organic material. And then in addition, in order to analyze each of our samples for lead content, we needed to suspend them in a liquid medium, so we underwent a acid digestion procedure as well. Okay, so one of the big pollutants in our samples were lead. So we looked at uh, lead in the concentration, so we tested five different soil samples. So the U.S. average background soil concentration for lead is 25.8 ppm. As you can see in the top right, these are five samples and their results. Only two of the five exceeded the background limits. 
And from that, we're able to conclude, even though they exceeded the regular background limits of the EPA limits, which is 400 ppm, they did not exceed that. So from that, we were able to say that it was not from the incinerator. We also tested our lead data for X-ray or through X-ray fluorescence. X-ray F <laughs> X-ray fluorescence is it irradiates samples with X-rays and it causes those samples to emit certain rays, and from that we're able to reveal the concentrations. All of our samples follow the same trend. They exceeded the average US sample, which is still 25.8, but they did not exceed the EPA limit. And from that, they still follow the same trend. We also went through mercury analysis, which is another important pollutant in, uh, from the incinerators. So the oven on the right it essentially works. It heats the samples up to about 800 degrees C. And then from that, the mercury is put into the gaseous phase. And we're able to measure the concentration that way. A center SRM, which is our fish protein, which is used to measure how the, how the mercury functions, how the oven functions, and from that, we were able to test the validity of our sample. Our average percent recovery was 92.93%, and we ran five different soil samples through this test. Okay, so our results for mercury is, so the U.S. background soil average is 50 ppb, and four of our five samples exceeded that, and four of the five were actually close to the Cummings School. One was on the other side, as you can tell. There is no EPA limit for mercury in soil, and when I say EPA, it's the Environmental Protection Agency. So it is possible that incinerator played a role in the high levels of mercury. But we also have to keep other things in mind, for example, the paint. During this time, mercury and lead were used in paint. So mercury used in paint was until the 1960s, and lead was used until 1979. Mercury was in paint and phased out completely by 1990. So since the Cummings Street School opened in 1926, it was a potential possibility that the levels of mercury and lead we found were because of the old paint. So to test this, Dr. Shorts actually had samples of lead containing paint that or paint that contained lead. So therefore we ran mercury analysis on them and we found that the Hampton house had 1,200 ppb lead and Palmetto had 200 ppb lead. But to compare this to what we found, our samples had actually higher levels of mercury concentration. So therefore we could indicate that the high levels we found were because of the incinerator, not because of the are our samples. So in conclusion, like we mentioned, um, our mercury concentrations were significantly higher than the U.S. average in four out of five of our samples. However, our lead concentrations were not elevated. Um, however, we believe this may be attributed to the differences in the way these elements may have been distributed from the incinerator. Like we mentioned before, lead has a much higher boiling point and, and is much more likely to have been retained in the ash content from the incinerator, whereas our mercury with a much lower boiling point would have been able to enter into the gaseous phase and be dispersed over a much larger area. Um, so in conclusion, our study provides some preliminary data that suggests the presence of historical pollution from the Cumming Street incinerator. And this historical contamination that we found also supports the history of environmental injustice within Spartanburg. And then as far as our future directions, like we mentioned, our sample space was very limited. We weren't able to sample outside of Wofford College property. And so next steps should include a body <coughs> sample collection over a much larger area, including beyond Wofford College property and on the site of the original incinerator, if permission were to be granted. And then in addition, there is a small creek that runs behind the Cumming Street School and right near the original site of the incinerator. So it would be interesting to explore the lead and mercury levels within that creek as well. And then we just wanted to extend a thank you to Dr. Terry Ferguson, Dr. John Lane, Dr. Dan Ricker, Richter, and Betsy Teeter, who assisted us with this project, as well as our faculty advisor here at Wofford, Dr. Schwartz. Questions for our presenters? Uh, how long does this real sample testing take you guys in lab? <coughs> I did the majority of the 
the soil samples. So we did them triplicates, so in order to see how accurate our readings were. And it roughly would take me an hour and a half to two, depending, because I had to do it three times for each of our five samples. And one thing to keep in mind, too, is in order for us to use our analyzer that looked at lead content, we couldn't just place the soil within the machine. We had to undergo a full acid digestion, which can take many hours in and of itself. I think in total it's about eight plus hours. You might have already said this, but um, you said these are preliminary data results suggesting that there could be a follow-up um, experiment. If that's the case, I mean, from the people that were doing it, what would you do? What would um, you look at? So like we mentioned, um, we were not able to test on the original incinerator site. Ideally, we would love to get permission from Spartanburg Regional Hospital System to test on that location, but that is a very long-winded process. Um, and then in addition, the remaining creek on Walford College campus is a good place to start. But overall, we only sampled five locations kind of sporadically, and so having a more plotted sample set that was much more organized um, would give us a lot better of an idea. Any other questions?